Entering and going through the sacred ordinances of the temple ceremony has deep meaning to the Cherokee. Every person who will enter the temple to go through the four steps, passing each veil from the first through the fourth must need to know the exact passwords and responses to the questions that will be e directed to that person. Each must repeat the same words and substance. Each must be acquainted with the purpose of their going through the ceremony. If one is going for the purpose of being baptized for the dead, then one will also need to go to a river nearby for whose purpose its waters have been blessed. The person will be immersed into the river waters. This type of baptism is similar to the baptism for oneself, except for the fact that proxy baptisms are performed on behalf of the deceased. Prior to being baptized for the dead, the proxy must be worthy. The proxy must have had to fast for four days and for nights, going without complete drink and nourishment for that period of time, in order to purify the body before performing the proxy baptism. This purification process also requires the need for the proxy to go into a sweat house or sweet lodge where one takes a sweat bath. This allows one to sweat out the bad or evil spirits that may reside inside one's body. One is required to attend to a sweat bath at least twice a day during the four-day ordeal. The person entering the sweat house will wear light-colored clothing, although it will not necessarily need to be white. This light-colored clothing is necessary because the person will be entering into the temple. During baptism the proxy baptism, or baptism for oneself one hardly wears any clothing. The reason for this is that anciently buckskin used to be worn. As the buckskin became wet, the skin hide became heavy and uncomfortable to wear. It is the ancient belief, and right, that if the people who were married but not sealed according to the sealing ceremony, and one of the passed on in death, the survivor being worthy to enter the temple because when they both were alive, and in mortality were unable to enter into the temple, due to one or both of their unworthy status could, invite a worthy brother or sister as the case may be, or a blood relative, to stand in as proxy for the deceased companion. However, if no blood relative could be found, then the survivor wishing the ordinance of marriage sealing would have to fast and pray until someone was found, worthy enough, to stand in as the proxy. The religious rite would then take place, so that the sealing ceremony in the marriage covenant would take its binding power upon the living and the dead, both of the participants. The surviving spouse and the proxy stand-in would need to go through the ceremonial ordeal as described earlier. The contract would be read to both people, the pricking of the finger and the exchanging of blood, with the word exchange, as well as the final blessing being pronounced upon the two. Thank you.